Hi hey guys. My talk is going to be about a new way of making changes to the source code. But before I begin, let me ask you, how many people have, have seen the presentation by Brett Victor, Inventing on Principle? Okay, so his uh, main idea was about the immediate connection between the source code and the result. Let me explain you why is it so important. My usual workflow, and probably yours, is simply the following. I make changes to the code, I run it in browser, then I probably have to recreate the state of the application, and then I look at the results and compare it to what I expected, and then I repeat. And I repeat even more times because I cannot always foresee and understand what my changes will result. For instance, if I want to, say, change the looks or behavior of a button on a web page, I usually go to the editor, type in some changes, then I save the file, switch to the browser, refresh, then I have to scroll down to the place where a button is, look at the button, OK. Maybe I have to change something more, then I go to the editor, type in changes, save the file, go to the browser, refresh, scroll down, look at, and again and again, doing it all the day. And maybe you're doing the same. And there is two problems here, actually. The first is that I waste time. I keep, in, keep repeating and repeating the same mechanical actions all the day. And I get tired. And the second is that as I do not have V8 in my mind or some DOM renderer in my mind, I often do not know what will be the result. And this makes my ability to, to create, to play with stuff, to try things, to imagine quite limited. So his idea was that you make changes and you see the result immediately, in the same moment you make this change. And let's look how it works in real life now. So here I have my WebStorm 5 running. Have anybody heard about WebStorm? Cool. So this is the IDE for web development, a lot of cool features, nice application. And my project is a simple static page that I have stolen, stolen from JetBrains website. So there is a, an HTML5. Can you see the code? Should I make it bigger? OK. And there are some links to the style sheets and so on. And this is how it looks like in the browser, in Chrome. So this is a nice page with some books on shelves. You know, Let me put it to the right. So since this page is mine now, let me change it. So, for instance, I wanted to change the title. Like I type Curials Bookshelf. And you see that page is updated instantly. It is not refreshed. Instead, WebStorm replaces the corresponding DOM element while I am typing. To prove that, let me do the same with the tooltip. You see this tooltip? If I scroll down, and I like something like Kirill, with no page refresh, you know. It's just the beginning. If I go to CSS, and let me, for instance, change the color. Oh, a wrong one, sorry. You see the color changes the same way I change it on the left. Mm. 
the same for background. I can even use a color picker to pick up any color on the screen. Like this. The same is for for fonts. Which font would you like more? This one or this one or this one? <laughs> Next time. <laughs> if I want to say, give more space between the books, I can do it either this way or I can basically use the slider. Anybody likes it? This man? Or I can make the books dance. Hey! Cool. But this is a, not a CSS conference, not an HTML conference, it's a JavaScript conference, right? And guess what will happen with JavaScript? Let me add some more animation to my, uh, to my web page. Let me draw a clock. Clock is going to be a simple circle uh, with, uh, with just a line for the hand. So let me create a canvas at the bottom. And some width and height. Like this. It. It's going to appear somewhere below the books, and let me create a new CSS file. Like this. So first, let me register a handler. which will initialize the time. Like this. And install a function that will draw a cl the clock. Yes, yeah, sure. Like 10 times a second. Oh, wrong place. So usual stuff like Okay, so first I need to clear my context. Like this. And then I need to draw a circle. So it's going to be context begin path. Context stroke. And in between, I want to say context arc. What's the number? Like this. There is not nothing on the screen. And the problem is that this onload handler has already been executed. So here I have to refresh my page. Okay, something is wrong. This is probably the center. So I need to say canvas.
cool. If I want to say, make this circle more thick, I do line width equals to five. Oops. Should be working. <laughs> Let me try it again. In just a moment, guys. We are all developers, you know. Okay. Anyway, it was supposed to be working. Maybe I will try something else. Let me try to, to draw this hand for the clock. Okay, I give up. Don't want to waste your time. I'm sorry? Oh, thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> you got a free license. <laughs> For the next version. So, yeah, so I can basically control the thickness of the line instantly because WebStorm knows how to replace that function that I change. So no, now I can play with my code, like change the, change any number, any parameter that I want. You see this line changes while I'm changing the source code. And this is the direct change to the source code, not the effective DOM or some, something. So there are both changes. The source code, that code that you keep in your version control, and the code that's the state of the browser. And to, to wrap up, I would say that immediate connection exists. Using WebStorm, you can have this immediate connection to HTML, to CSS property, be it color or margin or whatever, and JavaScript as well. And you can try this immediate connection right now, and I hope it will help you. You just can download a trial version of WebStorm for free, and it's there. If you have any questions, you can reach me by email or ping me on Twitter. Thanks. Does, does everyone, anyone have any questions?
Uh, yeah, good in front. Um, when you replace DOM nodes according to the HTML you've changed, do you I exchange everything or just the thing you've changed? Or no, only the part that changed. And, and how do you figure out what is what? There is some code for that. <laughs> so, sometimes it's tricky. Thanks. So does that support like uh, transpiling from CoffeeScript or languages? Not, like not that? right now, it's on the plan. Okay, cool. So right now we, we can work with static files like CSS and HTML and CSS and less and all, all this all this compiling are on the plan. Um, so, so one of the limitations from what you were showing was the uh, the window dot onload thing. Um, yeah. Are there other ones like that, or is is that like the only thing? General limitation is that uh, if a function or JavaScript code has been already executed, at the moment you change it, it's gone. On the next execution, uh, it's it's new. So we we do not replay the the past actions. It doesn't make much sense. I actually have a question. Could you show um, the refactoring support inside WebStorm? Uh, what kind of? Some kind of? Yeah, for JavaScript. Introduce variable is there. It doesn't make, make much sense right here. Extract method is there. Or inline. Rename, of course. I can't remain, rename this one, but this one will be renamed. There's actually many more. Cool. Okay, one more question. It will work. Yes. The question was, if I change a name in one file, would the other files be updated? But there are some cases where you don't know uh, if that function is used in another file. But like, uh, if, if ID is not sure about whether it's used or not, it will suggest you to review the occurrences that you can manually include them or exclude them. For instance, if you reference a function by just a str string literal, it's just one of the cases when ID is not sure. W what do you mean? Cool. I think that's it. Um, thank you very, very much, Carol. Thanks.